Okay, so what we got here is a couple fire brick. This one's 13 and a half by six by three. And this is a clipper, it's a four and a half by nine. That's a standard one. Now, these aren't the hardest fire brick out there, but they're commonly used. A clipper is something like an Empire. Now, the thing about these are, if you was to lay these out in a course, and you have it like that, that would be considered a stretcher. You would use the same um, size brick, but laying them like that would be a shiner. Lay them like that would be a soldier course. That would be a sailor. Okay, now if they was all laid like this, at the pieces of the front of the brick again, um, that would be a header course. And then, like that, there again, you'd have the same size brick. Um, that would be considered a roll lock. Okay. Now, if he's going to cut one of these bricks, wouldn't matter which one. If he's going to cut it, just say in the middle here, what you would end up with is two bats. So if you're cutting it this way, it would be considered a bat. If you was to cut it long ways, okay, that would be considered a split. And there again, if you lay them down flat, and you cut it this way or this way, you know, just any way long ways, you end up with a soap. Now you can also take and cut at an angle and you'd end up with a wedge because that would be the long way of the brick. Um, if you used to take it on the side there and cut it at an angle, you'd end up with two arches. And there is a combination of bricks for that stuff whenever you do like a dome or something like that. See now if you had a bunch of wedges, which you wouldn't have that gap there because the brick would be cut, you could make an arch. Um, same thing with the arch brick. You know, you could make an arch. And then if you had that arch and you cut the bottom off and the top off after you make it and make it flat on top and the bottom, um, I'll try to insert a little picture here. That would be called a jack arch. The little corner brick on an arch is called a skew. But that's just a few things there. Um, these are a lot harder and denser and weigh a lot more than um, your normal red brick. They don't like taking the weather very good. And I'll tell you, those 13 and a halves especially, even a 9 inch brick, if you start humping them things all day, um, doing pallets and pallets of them, they do get heavy. And the other thing is, see like you'll have a joint and block or brick and you'll strike it. These don't. These you butter the brick and you only have a 16 to an eighth inch gap or a mortar joint in between them. So there's no striking, no nothing. You just want to keep them clean so that um, after you're done, any mortar or something sticks on the outside and there's heat, it'll make it spall off and bring part of the brick. So what we would do is, after we got a wall done, if there's any things on it, we'd take burlap and some water after the mortar was, you know, getting a little harder and wash the wall down just to keep that from spawning. Now it's a whole different kind of mortar. It's a little more on the order of thin set, but it's not. It's a high temperature mortar. But anyway, that's just a little bit about fire brick. I've done that for quite a few years, and I've seen them laying there and figured I'd give you some useless information.